a small boy is too poor to be able to pay rent. That is why he shrinks in size to fit in a mouse hole and live there instead. A boy named Bertle spends his days being bored at home. Every morning, besides Sunday, his parents go to work and spend the entire day there. To make Bertle less upset, his dad promises him to do something fun on Sunday. His mother leaves him some meatballs for lunch. The parents suggest Bertle should play chips with their neighbor Ms. Holda. But the boy is bored by this old lady. Bertle used to have a sister named Martha, but she died from the flu a year ago. Bertle got a dollhouse in memory of his sister, but the boy finds it boring to play with the dollhouse alone. The mom tightly hugs Bertle and says that it is hard for her to leave her son on his own. The parents realize that they are late for work, so they quickly get dressed, get on their bikes and leave. Bertle longingly watches them right away. Right away, Ms. Holda suggests playing a round of checkers, but the boy totally refuses. Bertle returns to the flat, opens the window and yells for his parents to come back. But the window abruptly closes, and the boy's cries are left unheard. Left on his own, Bertle gets bored and can't understand why adults need to go to work so much. In the meantime, the parents arrive at the factory. They are afraid of getting told off for being late once again. The department manager notices that the couple got to work later than everyone else and mutters under his breath angrily. At home, Bertle plays with all the objects he can see, but it doesn't bring him joy. All of a sudden, the boy hears a rustling rat that is not a hole in their flat. He looks for the rat just so he has something to do, but he doesn't find anything. Then Bertle approaches his sister's dollhouse. He throws the doll and yells that she's stupid. However, he instantly embraces the doll and says that she wasn't stupid when Martha was alive. Suddenly, Musia, Ms. Holda's cat, runs into the apartment. Bertle picks her up and starts petting her. Musia is followed by Ms. Holda herself. She calls Bertle to play chips with her, but the boy refuses again. Upset, the woman leaves. Bertle lies down in his bed and stares at the ceiling. All of a sudden, a light comes on in the rat hole under the bed, and a cheerful whistle is heard from there. Afterwards, a tiny person comes out of the hole. Bertle notices him and shudders in surprise. The little person turns out to be a friendly boy named Nils Carlson Pissling. He says that he lives in the basement. He used to live in the park, but it got too cold there. Now he rents a room from an evil rat named Jofson. The boys complain to each other about their boredom, and Nils invites Bertle to go down to his room. Bertle laughs and doesn't think he'd be able to squeeze into the hole. Immediately, they hear Jofson rustling, and horrified Nils hides behind the table leg. The thing is that Nils owes rent to the rat. If he doesn't pay Jofson by the end of the week, she will bite the boy to death. Nils has nothing to pay, but he tries to not fall into despair. Then, he again invites Bertle to come over. To do so, Bertle just needs to touch the magic nail at the entrance to the hole and say a spell to become tiny. But Bertle understands that his parents will be upset if their son shrinks. Nils reassures his friend that he can become big again later using the same nail and spell. Then Bertle crawls under his bed, touches the nail, says the magic words and becomes as tiny as Nils. Together, the friends enter the hole and explore the basement. A lot of unnecessary things are kept here, which seem gigantic to the boys. Soon they come to Nils's room. It is dirty, cold and has no furniture at all. To keep themselves warm, the boys play tag and rub each other's backs. Nils says he sleeps on the floor. But because of the cold, he has to get up every hour and run. It is strange for Bertle to hear this. He decides to get some wood for a small fireplace in his friend's room. Nils also admits that he hasn't eaten anything today. Bertle urgently decides to do something to help the tiny boy. Nils is incredibly grateful to Bertle. He promises to become his most faithful friend for life. But then Nils immediately gets worried that Bertle will never return, so he blocks the way out. Bertle assures him that everything will be fine. Finally, Nils admits that meeting Bertel is the best thing that happened to him in his life. After that, Happy Bertel goes upstairs to his apartment. At the exit out of the hole, he touches the nail and incorrectly pronounces the magic phrase. Nothing happens. Bertel begins to suspect that his new friend has deceived him. But Nils clarifies that he needs to say, become a boy. Finally, Bertel figures it out, and he again becomes a boy of regular size. At home, he finds some burnt matches, a meatball and a piece of cheese. Bertel brings all these goods into the hole. Suddenly, on the way to Nils's room, the boys hear Jofson. Out of fear, Nils drops his meatball. The brave Bertel lights up the basement with an old lantern but doesn't notice the hiding rat. The boys come to Nils's room and put the matches into the fireplace. Then, Nils stretches his arm towards the matches, says some magic words, and the wood catches fire. Bertel can't hide his surprise. The friends warm themselves up by the fireplace and eat the meatball eagerly. Bertel remembers the cheese. Jofson comes to its smell and loudly rustles in the basement. Nils tells Bertel that Jofson is demanding 100 grams of cheese for one month's rent. Obviously, the boy would never get that much because a piece of cheese like that would be the size of his entire room. Nils gets happy that he won't be freezing tonight. He lies down on the floor next to the fireplace and covers himself with a piece of cheese. Bertel tries to lie down next to his friend, but the floor is too hard and uncomfortable. Then he gets an idea. 
Bertel goes upstairs again, becomes big, takes a bed and some clothes from the dollhouse and throws it all down the rat hole. Together, the boys take the bed into Nils's room. He gets over the moon because he's never slept in a real bed before. Nils puts on a nightgown and feels truly happy. But Chawson doesn't sleep. She lurks outside the window of Nils's room and watches the boys. Nils is afraid that Chawson will come for him at night when Bertel is not around. But Bertel calms his friend down. He promises to deal with the rat. Nils is infinitely grateful to Bertel. Bertel is also happy that he is not lonely anymore. The boys sing a song about their friendship. Soon Nils goes to bed. Bertel turns off the light in his room and returns home. Late at night, Chawson sneaks into Nils's room and steals the meatball. The next morning, Bertel has breakfast with his parents. The boy is cheerful and excited. He demands that his parents leave for work as soon as possible. His mom and dad are happy about such a change in their son's behavior and hurry to the factory. Bertel closes the door behind his parents in a rush and prepares to visit his friend. He takes sugar cubes and a coil of rope. With these goods, Bertel crawls under the bed. Immediately, Miss Holda enters the apartment. But the boy quickly says the spell, becomes tiny, so Miss Holda can't find him. Bertel knocks on Nils's door, but he doesn't open it. Bertel decides to enter his friend's room anyway and finds him crying. Nils tells Bertel that Joffson stole his meatball last night. Bertel promises he will protect Nils from Joffson. To prove it, he pretends to fight the imaginary rat. Bertel comments on his own blows, saying that Joffson's whiskers will fall off from his dexterity. Nils laughs and admires his friend's bravery. Bertel finds an old alarm clock in the basement. He ties the end of the rope to the alarm bell, and stretches the other end into Nils's room. Now, if Joffson appears in the middle of the night, all Nils has to do is pull the end of the rope. Then Bertel would hear the alarm clock and come to his friend's help. But Nils is afraid that the rat will bite them both. Then Bertel whispers in his friend's ear that Joffson needs to be tricked into touching the magic nail and saying the spell to become tiny. Satisfied with their ingenuity, the boys have fun and play tag. Bertel falls to the floor and notices how dirty the room is. Then Bertel runs to his house to get everything that is necessary for cleaning. He takes a thimble of soapy water, some toothbrushes without the handles, and a piece of floor cloth. He brings all of this to Nils's room. With the help of a brush, the boys sweep the floor. Then they clean the fireplace and take out the trash. After that, they scrub the floor with toothbrushes. Once Nils's room is clean, Bertel remarks that his friend would benefit from a bath himself. Indeed, the last time Nils washed himself was a year ago, when it was raining in the park. Bertel goes home again. There, he takes a sugar bowl, his dad's mirror, a comb, some handkerchiefs and his toy crane. With the help of a crane, the boys lower down everything necessary for the spa procedures. Then, the friends put the water hose in Nils's room, and Bertel runs hot water from the kettle through it. Soon enough, the sugar bowl, which has become a bathtub, is completely filled with water. The boys splash around in the bath together and sing a song about their friendship and courage. They make fun of stupid chops and dream of how they will get rid of her. After the bath, the friends dry themselves off with handkerchief. Bertel then brushes his friend's hair in front of his father's mirror. Bertel looks around Nils's room again and thinks about how to make it even more comfortable. He goes upstairs, becomes big and collects all the furniture from the dollhouse. Bertel goes down with this load. Nils hears a rumble outside the door and thinks that Chawson has come for him. But it turns out to be just Bertel with a flower pot. With the help of the crane, the friends lower all the furniture down, and even a battery. The boys then bring the furniture into the room. It becomes much more comfortable there. They connect the lamp to the battery and conduct electricity into the room. After working hard, the friends sit down at the table. Nils worries that Joffson will now want to live in such a cozy room herself. Bertel calms his friend down and hurries upstairs to clean the sugar bowl, as his parents should return home any minute. He reminds Nils that he just needs to pull the rope if Joffson comes at night. Meanwhile, Miss Holda is looking for her cat everywhere. Musia ran away because she smelled a rat in the basement and went hunting for it. Before going to bed, Bertel's mother strokes his head and notices that his hair is wet. The boy explains that it's because he bathed in a sugar bowl. Parents are happy that their son has such a good imagination. His mom asks him where all the furniture from the dollhouse is. Bertel doesn't know what to say, when all of a sudden, worried Ms. Holda bursts into the flat. She can't find Musia anywhere. Bertel is delighted to hear that the cat likes to catch rats. After talking with Ms. Holda, Bertel's mom forgets about the dollhouse furniture, and the family goes to bed. In the middle of the night, Joffson approaches Nils's window. The boy immediately closes it with a paper clip and puts the end of the rope closer to him. Despite all the attempts, Joffson can't get in through the window, so she runs to the other side of the basement and persistently tries to force her way in through the door. Nils doesn't wake up, but only has a nightmare. The door doesn't give in, and the rat tries to break the boards off the wall. Nils jumps up from all the noise and pulls the rope. 
Bertel hears the alarm and rushes to help his friend. He runs into Nils's room and tries to hold onto the flimsy boards. Then Bertel grabs a brush and tickles Joffson between her whiskers. The rat loses her temper. The boys get incredibly frightened and decide to deceive Joffson. They say that there is a small piece of cheese under Nils's bed. But if Joffson touches the nail and says the spell to become tiny, the piece of cheese will immediately increase. The rat listens carefully and moves away from the wall, only to break into the room through the door. The boys quickly hide in the closet. The rat walks around the room and snorts threateningly. Then the boys call Musia for help. The cat peeks into the basement and growls at Joffson. The rat is forced to run. She goes under Bertel's bed, touches the nail and turns into a tiny mouse. Musia immediately sneaks up on her and catches Joffson. The boys calm themselves down after this adventure. They sit near the fireplace and eat sugar. Bertel has to go back upstairs to not scare his parents with his absence. He invites Nils to come with. In the morning, Bertel's father can't find his mirror and his comb, and his mom doesn't know where her toothbrush went. The parents wake up Bertel to say goodbye to him before work. The boy quietly throws a ladder, made of matches and rope. Nils goes down the ladder and hides behind the leg of the bed. The parents are about to leave when suddenly they hear someone's high-pitched voice. It was Nils who said goodbye to them. The father immediately goes to Bertel's bed and notices the ladder. He asks his son not to play with matches. Then the parents leave for work, and Bertel and Nils see them off, standing on the porch. Ms. Holda notices Bertel and tells him that last night Musia caught and brought a very small mouse into the kitchen. Hearing this, the boy smiles happily. Straight away, Ms. Holda invites Bertel to play chips with her. In response, Bertel and Nils burst out laughing. 